So all day long you can say, I you know, have staged a thousand homes, but if you don't have one post on your social media, if you don't have one interview with the realtor that you've worked with, been on one podcast, how does the audience that's looking towards you to see where's the proof in the pudding? questions. Number one, um, we can say on our social media all day long that we're the best staging company, we're the best realtor, we're the you know highest awarded whatever, but if in building authority, correct me if I'm wrong, you have to have a track record of what you're doing. So all day long you can say, I you know, have staged a thousand homes, but if you don't have one post on your social media, if you don't have one interview with the realtor that you've worked with, been on one podcast, how does the audience that's looking towards you to see where's the proof in the pudding? 100%. And so what are tangible ways that these stagers can start building that? Because I think that's what they might, might be thinking is like we're saying like, yeah, get get on the news or, and or write an article. How in the heck do you write an article? Obviously you can write an article in my publication. Thank you very much. But how do you get it in the news? How do you get it on Yahoo? How do you get in the Wall Street Journal? How do you, there's a way to do all of that, correct? There is a process for it and um, a shameless plug, we do help you guys out with I knew that. that at Sizzle Media. However, if you guys aren't at the point to where you're looking to have done for you services like what we're providing, you can, it's all about the pitching and it's all about the approach. So connecting with those people and then two, you know, making a list of, okay, who, who can connect me with somebody in the media? How do I go there? And you guys can even just Google your local news station and there's an email address you can try to connect with them. But pitching them on that um, is gonna be key. Also too, you know, look at your friends list and see who has a current podcast because you got to start somewhere. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go be on, I don't know, GQ magazine. Like, okay, yeah, you and everybody else, but you have to have that solid foundation of who you are first. And that could be many ways. You could be a guest on a podcast. So I think it's called podcastguest.com. If not, just Google podcast guests. And that's just a platform where people are actively looking for guests to be on their show. Now, I'm not going to say that you're going to get on there and all of a sudden you're going to be famous, but that's going to be piece of authority that you get to utilize in other ways when you say, okay, I want to be, I want to be speaking on your stage, Jana. Here's, you know, a previous interview I had with so-and-so. So now Jana is not going to just say, okay, yeah, you and everybody else wants to speak on my stage, but now she's going to say, okay, great. You've actually had previous experience and somebody saw you as an authority because that's the key too. You've got to understand like, how are you showing up and showing out from everyone else? And I think a lot of people too, and probably the home staging industry is a little bit different, but I know in real estate, people are so focused on promoting their brokerage, the brokerage or their franchise or whoever they're with. And don't get me wrong, I'm a licensed real estate agent. I'm a fan of the brokerage I'm with, but I understand that I've got to show up as Holly Kitchens, not EXP. So I think too, we get so caught up in trying to promote our business that we forget to promote ourselves and making sure too, like you have your name. So like my podcast is Unleash Your Inner, Le Inner Legend with Holly Kitchens, right? So I plug my name into any time I have an opportunity to do so, as well as like a Google search, you know, Holly Kitchens Inc. I have my own Google your business, uh, Google my business page. So things like that, making sure you're adding your name into um, your shows or anything that you're putting out there. So when people are searching it, that's popping up. LinkedIn is another great way too. That's another platform I'm not a huge fan of just because of the million spam messages I get. However, I make sure it's fresh, I make sure it's relevant, but I also make sure my keywords at the bottom of like, you know, you have the profile. I make sure that those are relevant too because LinkedIn is another one that pops up within the first page of Google. So doing that, getting connected with other people and then building that foundation so that you can start building the blocks of more authority and getting featured in other ways. Awesome. So quickly, give us uh, a few of your unique marketing things that you're doing now and then also your big challenge to them for today. Perfect. Oh, perfect.
Oh, wait, can we hit the next slide? I'm trying to whisper up here. So obviously, story stickers are going to be my one of my favorite ways, um, just because it's so fun and easy to do. I know we've done a couple of you guys here on the stage. I know, Lori, we've done yours yesterday. We're going to do some more today with a different outfit. But you guys, I started this back in June of last year, and I've over got over 60 million views on GIFs. I get people sending me screenshots all the time, my sister even included. She's like, you're famous. I'm like, I'm actually not, but thanks. I appreciate that. Um, I've had any... Uh, Ozzy Osbourne's uh, guitarist used one of my GIFs, and I have people screenshotting it and sending it to me like, oh my gosh, did you see Zach Wilde use your GIF? So it's such a unique way. I'm, I mean, I'm not getting money off of these views, but I'm getting social currency in those in that form of payment. So that's one of my current favorite ways, obviously, uh, podcasting. And um, yeah, that's just currently my favorite way right now. <laughs>